Cuchulain is one of the most famous characters from Irish mythology. He's gained sort of an immortal status and uh, gained particular popularity during the uh, Gaelic revival uh, movement in Ireland, uh, in which he was cast as a sort of a, a, a figure of uh, aspiration, I suppose, for the forces that were moving uh, against uh, the British in the latter part of the uh, 19th century and the early part of the 20th century. So tonight I'm going to read a, a little bit from a historical novel that was written by Standish O'Grady. It's called The Coming of Cuchulain and it was published in 1894. Uh, now, what's interesting about this is that Standish O'Grady was actually a Protestant. Uh, he was born in County Cork to, uh, he was the son of a Protestant clergyman. And his political beliefs were such that he thought that Ireland would best would be better served if it remained uh, part of the British Empire. But yet, some of his writings uh, appeared to inspire um, people who were, uh, I suppose, anti-British. Um, anyway, that's a little bit of background to this. Um, so this is a historical novel. It's based around the story of Satanta slash Cuchulain um, and... Uh, O'Grady became a scholar of Gaelic mythology and Irish history. So it's not entirely, um, and it's not factual, but it's not uh, entirely faithful to the manuscripts, uh, but nor does it go too far away into the imagination. Uh, this is a nice piece where uh, the Archdruid uh, makes a prophecy about the coming of Sitanta. Then Kaffa, Kaffa the Druid, the Archdruid, spake. It hath been foretold, he said, long since that the Oltonians shall win glory such as never was and never will be, and that their fame shall endure till the world's end. But first, there are prophecies to be accomplished and predictions to be fulfilled. For ere these things may be, there shall come a child to Emin Macha, attended by clear portents from the gods. Through him shall arise our deathless fame. And it hath been foretold that there shall be great divisions and fratricidal strife among the children of Ruri, a storm of war which shall strip the red branch nigh bare. Fergus was wroth at this and spoke words of scorn concerning the diviner and concerning all omens, prohibitions and prophecies. Crohor too and all the Red Branch rebu rebuked the prophet. Yet he stood against them like a rock, warred on by winds which stand immovable. Let them rage as they will, and refused to take back his words. Then said Crohor, Many are the prophecies which came wandering down upon the mouths of men, but they are not all to be trusted alike. Of those which have passed thy lips, O Kathva, we utterly reject the last, and think the less of thee for having reported it. But the former, which concerns the child of promise, hath been ever held a sure prophecy, and as such passed down through all the diviners from the time of Amergin, the son of Miletius, who first prophesied for the Gael. And now, being arch-king of the Oltonians, I command thee to divine for us when the coming of the child shall be. Then Katha, the arch druid, put on his divining apparel and took his divining instruments in his hands and made his symbols of power upon the air. And at first he was silent and, being in a trance, stared out before him with wide eyes full of wonder and amazement, directing his gaze to the east. In the end, he cried out with a loud voice, and prophesying, sang this lay. Yea, he is coming, he draweth nigh. Verily, it is he whom I behold, the predicted one, the child of many prophecies. Chief flower of the branch that is over all, the mainstay of Emin Macha, the battle prop of the Ultonians the torch of the valour and chivalry of the north, the star that is to shine forever upon the forehead of the gale. It is he who slumbers upon Schleifuad, 
the child who is like a star, like a star upon Schlieve Fuad. There is a light around him, never kindled at the hearth of Lou. The grey of Macha keeps watch and ward for him, and the whole mountain is filled with the Tuatha Then his vision passed from the Druid. He raised up his long white hands and gave thanks to the high gods of Erin that he had lived to see this day. Then Kaffa had made an end of speaking and there was a great silence in the hall. So you can see that there's a sort of a real biblical aspect to that. Uh, you know, the, the coming of the child, the uh, prophesied one, the saviour, the messiah, I suppose, in some respects. It's uh, it's quite biblical in its uh, tone. Yea, he, he, he is coming. Verily, it is he whom I behold. And, of course, the whole scene is very dramatic. And at first, Kaffa is rebuked by the king uh, for suggesting uh, such uh, things. Um, but um, as the you know the, the the demise of the red branch, but in the end all is good. Anyway, that is um, I I bought that in a secondhand bookshop. That's an original, like that's not a reprint. I think it's a first edition. Coming of Cuchulain by Standish O'Grady. <laughs>